Hey again everybody, uh, in this video we're going to still explore the different uh, ways to prove triangles congruent focusing on uh, angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle like we did in the last video. Uh, but in this video I want to just focus on the proofs. Okay. So sometimes with the proofs people kind of forget how to get the different various pieces. So hopefully this will help give a little refresher. Uh, our picture is not marked at all. So I think the first thing I want to do is make sure I mark my picture with whatever I can. Uh, the first piece of given information is that segment AE bisects segment BD. So uh, that is given for sure. And how would I kind of mark that, right? What does bisect mean? Well, if you remember, bisect means like kind of cut something in half. So if AE is literally cutting BD in half, that means C is in the middle. And that means these two little pieces have to be the same. So I'm going to mark it because AE cuts BD perfectly in half. Think of literally taking a pair of scissors and cutting BD right here. If you cut it in the perfect you know, middle spot there, that midpoint, then those two segments have to be the same. So we would actually put that in our proof. BC is congruent to DC, and we would say the definition of bisector. And technically it's a it's a segment bisector because if you remember in the other video or in the other um, lesson we had an angle bisector. Uh, but you know what? I could be kind of flexible here. If if you said by the definition of midpoint instead, to me that means you still kind of understand what's happening because AE has to cut BD at the midpoint. Um, you could even make that its own step. It's just this one doesn't have enough room for that. Uh, the bottom line is, do you understand why these two pieces would have to be congruent? And in either case, you definitely do. Okay, so there's one piece. They gave us BD is, or uh, BD, angle B is congruent to angle D, that's given. So let's put that in our picture. Angle B is congruent to angle D. And now we've got a situation like, you know, that, that's why we do these kind. So you can visually see, you know, where all the pieces are. So now that we have this picture, we say, all right, what else do I need? Okay, what else would I need in order to get these two triangles congruent? And hopefully you recognize that there are a pair of vertical angles here. It's very common. Be careful when you write your statement though, do not write angle C is congruent to angle C. Okay, I don't know which angle you're necessarily referring to even if you did mark it in your picture. But in a proof, you really need to be specific. So we're gonna go angle ACB is congruent to angle uh, ECD. And you would just say the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles theorem. And that gets you another piece of the puzzle. So therefore, the two triangles are gonna end up being congruent by you have two angles on the side between them. You have two angles on the side between them. That is angle side angle. Okay. How about another one? Let's see. This time they actually marked some things for us. Um, interestingly enough, I think they might have accidentally given us too much information here. Uh, as I'm looking at it a little more closely, they do give us this, so that's just given. But they didn't mark that as parallel. And then I see angle L is congruent to N, but then there's this other marking here kind of giving away what you're supposed to do. So maybe it's supposed to be a little hint, but I would have liked to have left those out for you to figure it out. Why would angle NMO, let's actually just write it down, NMO congruent to angle LOM, why would those two have to be congruent knowing that you have these parallel lines? Well, hopefully you can see those are actually alternate interior. And if you've got parallel lines, then alternate interior angles must be congruent. That's the alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, now hopefully if those marks weren't there, you'd still be able to tell, but you wouldn't be able to tell necessarily if you didn't realize these lines were parallel. So you always wanna mark that in your picture so you can see it. So this was given, that's already marked. So we have two pairs of angles. We have nothing else, but somehow these triangles are supposed to be congruent. All right, sorry, that was given there. What other piece do we need? Well, two angles, I need another, I need a side, right? Remember, all of them needed a side. And if you remember, when two triangles overlap, we can use the reflexive property. So you could simply say MO is congruent to MO by the reflexive property. And just like that, we have two angles and a side, but not the side between them, right? The side between them is are parallel. Those sides are parallel. The congruent sides are the ones, you know, after the two angles are congruent. So single, double, then the side single, double, then the side. That's angle, angle, side instead, right? Because the side is not between them this time. Okay, that's that one. How about in this one? This time they did mark it. Uh, CB is parallel to AG, so let's fill that in. Uh, you know, I don't know why, I should have done this one first. Angle G is congruent to angle B, that's given. Uh, CB is parallel to GA, 
that's given. If you put those on the same line, that's totally fine. To be honest, I'm, I don't remember if I put them on the same line when I did it the first time. Doesn't make a difference. If we need another box, we'll add another box. So that's all marked and all given. There must be other information, and if you followed what we did in the one before, it's very similar because this time you also have alternate interior angles. Angle BCA congruent to angle GAC. Again, alternate interior angles theorem. And we also have, <coughs> excuse me, we also have the reflexive property. So we have CA congruent to CA by the reflexive property. And then, of course, the two triangles, GCA, and it's right here, is congruent to triangle BAC. And again, it's by angle, angle, side. So the difference between these two, of course, is you had to come up with all the statements yourself. But by seeing this one, hopefully that helped. And then all the reasons are, are basically the same in this particular case. Okay, and last one. You've got um, sort of an application problem, but it it's really just boils down to basic proof. A zookeeper wants to make sure the triangular pens for her animals are the same size. Prove the two triangle, uh, triangle areas are congruent. If BA bisects angle CBF and CAF. So BA, segment BA bisects, and we talked about that before, uh, angle CBF and angle CAF, that's given, and that's one. And then two, let's use that information. BA is right here. This is BA. This is the sort of line BA. And it's cutting angle CBF and angle CAF in half. That means these two little angles have to be the same, and those two little angles have to be the same. When you have an angle bisector, it takes the bigger angle and it cuts it in half, just like it did for segments. So you can actually say angle CBA is congruent to angle uh, FBA, and you would just say by the definition, of angle bisector. Okay, this one you can't use midpoint for because that would be for segments. But you can use definition of angle bisector. Similarly, you can say angle CAB is congruent to angle FAB, and it's really the same as number two. Definition of angle bisector. I probably could have combined those but unfortunately my handwriting is not so great so I couldn't really fit it in there. But if you put those in the same step because it's the same reason, totally okay. And now we're just missing, an, uh, you know, we're just missing a side. Well, they share a side. You can say angle or angle, uh, segment uh, BA is congruent to segment BA by the reflexive property, reflexive property. And there's your last piece of the puzzle two angles and the side between them, two angles and the side between them. So triangle, um, let's go CBA is congruent to triangle. If I start with C, I gotta start with F, B, A. By angle, side, angle. Two angles and the side between them, two angles and the side between them, that is angle, side, angle. Now there's an extra box here, doesn't matter. I, my guess is maybe originally I separated these two. I did BA bisect CBF as one, and BA bisect CAF, and that's two. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. Maybe you use the third angles theorem, and then you end up doing angle, angle, side. That's fine too. Uh, but I usually just try to go the most direct route, and I think that's the most direct route. Okay, hopefully that helps. Uh, if you need any additional support, please let me know, and um, good luck with it. Hope all goes well.